now we are going to look at the protein folding and some very basic things about the protein folding uh, with the help of the Anfinsen's experiment. Now uh, Anfinsen uh, uh, is a pioneer uh, who start to think about the protein folding in different ways and he, he just conduct this experiment. He is having a native uh, protein. He just took the ribonucleus uh, as the, its uh, start point of the protein folding. So we have a native ribonucleus and what what he d uh, did in this case, they j uh, he j just added the 8 molar urea uh, along with beta markup to ethanol. These are the disrupting agents. Now, beta markup to ethanol is going to disrupt the disulfide linkages uh, among the protein subunits, protein domains, and motifs. They are going to disrupt the disulfide linkages, and urea is going to disrupt the structure of the protein, uh, other hydrogen bonds of the protein. Okay, uh, it is going to stabilize the protein in, in its native uh, form like that. Okay, so they are adding all this. After addition of all this, what happens? The native uh, protein is just getting denatured into something like that. Okay, it it make uh, uh, this random coil. Okay, and this random coil shows no activity because this is not a folded protein. And as we know, protein folding is the most important thing about the protein function because unless the protein is folded, protein cannot function. Okay, so after doing this, the protein uh, structure uh, will no longer active. Now, uh, th then then uh, then what he uh, did in this case, they denatured the reduced ribonuclease. And and after having this denatured ribonucleus, they dialysis he dialysis uh, and remove all the urea and also removes the beta markup to ethanol. And after removing the urea and beta markup to ethanol uh, through the dialysis step, uh, he just air oxidize all those sulfide linkages. And after that, uh, uh, the hypothesis was that all those sulfur will start to make the disulfide linkages after the, with the help of air oxidation. And uh, the hypothesis was proven right, and they get the native ribonucleus, and this ribonucleus is fully functional ribonucleus, like the previous one. So what what he did in this case, they took a ribonucleus, they disrupt the structure, they make it denatured, then again remove uh, the causative agents which which actually denatured this ribonucleus, and that eventually turns the ribonucleus into an active conformation. Okay. So after the denatures, it can uh, it can ha also process the same type of the same activity. So by looking at this, what he uh, what we can conclude that all the information that is necessary for a protein folding is is not at all pr uh, incorporated in the secondary structure, in the tertiary structure, or in the quaternary structure. Now all the information necessary for the protein folding is rather incorporated in its native structure, in its primary sequence. Okay. So primary sequence have it all. It's only dependence on the interaction. It's only on the interaction when the interaction start to have, when the amino acids start to interact with each other, we are having properly folded protein. Okay. Now uh, we are uh, going to talk about the second step of the Anfinsen's experiment, which reveals another conclusion: that uh, uh, after uh, suppose after uh, doing this, after um, using the uh, eight molar urea and beta markup to ethanol to denature uh, this ribonucleus, uh, he go through another he, he uh, another round uh, set of experiment. In this experiment, in this case, he is just removing uh, uh, only uh, the beta markup to ethanol. But not removing any urea, okay? Just removing the beta markup to ethanol. And as we know, if we remove the beta markup to ethanol, that means the, the those sulfur uh, groups, those SH groups inside uh, those uh, thionine and serine residues in in the amino acid sequence, they can interact with each other to make disulfide bonds. So they just remove this beta beta markup to ethanol, and what they can see, they can see uh, the protein uh, will make a structure of scrambled ribonuclease. This is not the ideal structure of ribonuclease that we used to find. This is a scrambled structure of ribonuclease. Uh, we can see, uh, we can tell this is the, uh, th this is not the properly folded structure, but this is, uh, 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 and lo we look for the activity of this scrambled ribonuclease, and this shows no activity at all. Why this is actually happening? We are removing the beta markup to ethanol. That means we are enabling, uh, we are make this uh, this uh, sulf, uh, this SH containing amino acid. We are enabling them to make bonds with each other, to make disulfide linkages with each other. They can make this linkage, but we are not removing the urea. That's why. Uh, that's why the protein structure will be will be freezed in this kind of situation. Okay. So that is a point. Now, if we further add, 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 add addition of the trace amount of beta markup to ethanol uh, is done, 
then what we can happen then we can see the scrambled ribonucleus suddenly get a meaning the scrambled ribonucleus finally make a structure which which in turn is very very much active like the original native ribonucleus okay so uh, so another important part is in this case is the native form of the protein has the thermodynamically most stable structure that's why any nearer structure about this native configuration so if we if we produce a near about structure of the native conformation very near about structure very similar structure of the native ribonuclease uh, native uh, protein conformation but still the protein wants to go to its native structure it's always a journey it's always a journey for the protein this is the take home message it's always the mo importance of the protein it's always print in the mind of the protein that we have to go to the native state so whether we are going very very close to the native state it is 90 nine percent similar to the native state but still the, they need to make this another one person to make the hundred percent native state so it is a journey from their native from their uh, scrambled state from their unfolded states toward the native state where they belong and this native state and that's because the native state is the most thermodynamically favorable structure okay so that's why this this thing is happening all the time Okay. and uh, we can also think that this disulfide linkages are important because when we uh, just first remove this beta mark cap ethanol the disulfide uh, linkage is formed but the formation of disulfide linkage is not uh, the the sequence uh, not not uh, not the uh, the amount or the sequence we we needed for a properly active enzyme now you can see in this picture this this enzyme after the removal of the beta mark cap ethanol can have this disulfide bonds but the disulfide bonds formed between 26 and 40 and 84 and 95 and those gives rise to the uh, um, less effective uh, and no active uh, as, as and without uh, any activity of this uh, uh, this uh, activity of this uh, enzyme but if we uh, add beta mark cap ethanol then we remove all these things then we remove urea uh, and then what we can have then we are having again disruption of this disulfide linkages and right disulfide linkages actually formed so it is not about the linkages this not about only the interactions hydrogen bonding hydrophobic interactions or disulfide bridges formation it's about the right things uh, uh, formation of the right thing the formation of uh, the right interaction so for a, for this ribonucleus the bonding the sul disulfide linkage between 26 and 84 amino acid residue is important rather than the 26 and 40 so if disulfide bridge is formed between the 26 and 40 residue instead of 26 and 84th residue then uh, it it will make a structure which is no longer active so it's not about only the making bonds it about the specific bonding so the bonding is specified to make uh, the native state so that's why the native state is really really one in a million we can find only one native state because there are lots of amino acid sequences and there are lots of combination of, uh, of amino acid can be done but only one type of combination is favored and that is the native combination okay so that's why it's a very very difficult journey to go from unfolded to state to the native state but proteins can achieve that and the, for achieving this thing uh, there are some other proteins which actually help uh, proteins to achieve that because sometimes protein uh, find this uh, really really tough uh, to to achieve so in those situations they have proteins like chaperones chaperonin which is actually helping the protein to achieve this very very dangerous task